Hey guys, this is Lauren the Cheesy Bard, and I know it's been a while. I'll give you guys an update video what's been going on with my life. I really wanted to get back into recording. So I picked up this little game called Doki Doki Literature Club. Um, I've heard, the only thing I've heard about it is that it's different than other visual novels. It's different than what's expected. Um, so... I wasn't sure exactly what that meant. I haven't actually seen anything about it yet. Uh, but the first screen says this game is not suitable for children or those who are easily disturbed. So, I don't know, maybe it's a horror game, I guess. Uh, who knows? But anyways, let's get started. Individuals suffering from anxiety or depression may not have a safe experience playing this game. For content warnings, please visit... Okay... By playing Doki Doki Literature Club, you agree that you are at least 13 years of age and you consent to your exposure of highly disturbing content. I've never had to go through this much work to actually start a visual novel. Um, the music sounds really happy, so this is probably going to be one of those, um, yeah, it's going to be one of those. <laughs> Uh, so, as some people may know, I really like dating sims. Uh, so maybe this is a dating sim. I Usually with these kind, you play as a boy, but I'll just put my name. Visual novels are kind of my favorite thing, because they're easy to play and then pick up, put down. I have a little bit of a uh, sore throat today, so my voices might not be up to snuff, but let's get going. Hey! I see an annoying girl running toward me from the distance, waving her arms in the air like she's totally oblivious to any attention she might draw to herself. That girl is Sayori, my neighbor and good friend since we were children. You know, the kind of friend you'd never see yourself making today, but it just kind of works out because you've known each other for so long. We used to walk to school together on days like this, but starting around high school, she would oversleep more and more frequently, and I would get tired of waiting up. But if she's going to chase after me like this, I almost feel better off running away. However, I just sigh and idle in front of the crosswalk and let Sayori catch up to me. Ha! Ha! I overslept again! But I caught you this time! Maybe, but only because I decided to stop and wait for you. Eh, you say that like you were thinking about ignoring me. She has surprisingly tiny eyes for an anime girl. And a very large head. That's mean, Lauren. Well, if people stare at you for acting weird, then I don't want them to think we're a couple or something. Fine, fine. But you did wait for me after all. I guess you don't have it in you to be mean even if you want to. Whatever you say, Sayori. <laughs> we cross the street together and make our way to school. As we draw near, the streets become increasingly speckled with other students making their daily commute. By the way, Lauren, have you decided on a club to join yet? A club? I told you- oh. I told you already, I'm not really interested in joining any clubs. I haven't been looking either. Eh, that's not true. You told me you would join a club this year. Did I? I'm sure it's possible that I did in one of our many conversations where I dismissively go along with whatever she's going on about. Sayori likes to worry a little too much about me when I'm perfectly content just getting by on the average while spending my free time on games and anime. Sounds about right. Uh-huh. I was talking about how I'm worried that you won't learn how to socialize or have any skills before college. Your happiness is really important to me, you know? And I know you're happy now, but I'd die at the thought of you becoming a neat in a few years because you're not used to the real world. You trust me, right? Not really. Don't make me keep worrying about you. All right, all right. I'll look at a few clubs if it makes you happy. No promises, though. Will you at least promise me you'll try a little? Yeah, I guess I'll promise you that. Yay! Why do 
I let myself get lectured by such a carefree girl. More than that, I'm surprised I even let myself relent to her. I guess seeing her worry so much about me makes me want to ease her mind at least a little bit, even if she does exaggerate everything inside her head. <clears throat> the school day is as ordinary as ever, and it's over before I know it. After I pack up my things, I stare blankly at the wall, looking for an ounce of motivation. Clubs. Sayori wants me to check out some clubs. I guess I have no choice but to start with the anime club. You never want to join the anime club. Hello? Sayori? Sayori must have come into the classroom while I was spacing out. I looked around and realized I'm only one left in the cra- Huh. I look around and realize that I'm the only one left in the classroom. I thought I'd catch you coming out of the classroom, but I saw you just sitting here and spacing out, so I came in. Honestly, you're even worse than me sometimes. I'm impressed. You don't need to wait up for me if it's going to make you late to your own club. Well, I thought you might need some encouragement, so I thought, you know... Know what? Well, that you could come to my club. I think I'd rather go to the anime club. Sayori. Yeah? There is no way I'm going to your club. Eh, meanie. Sayori is vice president of the literature club. Not that I was ever aware that she had any interest in literature. In fact, I'm 99% sure she only did it because she thought it would be fun to help start a new club. Since she was the first one to show interest after the one who proposed the club, she inherited the title Vice President. That said, my interest in literature is guaranteed to be even less. Yeah, I'm going to the anime club. Come on, please. Why do you care so much anyway? Well, she probably loves the main character. I guess me, because I put my name in. I'm the main character. She loves me. I kind of told the club yesterday I would bring in a new member. Oh, f screw you. And Natsuke made cupcakes and everything. <laughs> Don't make promises you can't keep. At this point, it's not my problem, it's her problem. She could go tell them that it's a... Well, if this is a horror game, then they might kill me for not showing up. I can't tell if Sayori is really that much of an airhead or if she's so cunning as if to have planned this all out. I let out a long sigh. <sighs> Fine, I'll stop by for a cupcake, okay? Her hands are very tiny, too. Yes, let's go! And thus, today marks the day I sold my soul for a cupcake. I dejectedly follow Sayori across the school and upstairs, a section of the school I rarely visit, being generally used for third-year classes and activities. Sayori, full of energy, swings open the classroom door. Everyone, the new member is here. I told you, don't call me a new member. Eh? I glance around the room. Welcome to the Literature Club. It's a pleasure meeting you. Sayori always says nice things about you. Oh, I am a boy. Oh well. Seriously? You brought a boy? Way to kill the atmosphere. Ah, Lauren, what a nice surprise. Welcome to the club. All words escape me in this situation. This club is full of incredibly cute girls. Uh, I'll admit, my type is more of the one on the right. Um, so if this is a dating sim, that's probably who I'm going to be going for. What are you looking at? If you want to say something, say it. Sorry. That's key. Hmm. The girl with the sour attitude, whose name is apparently Natsuki, is one I don't recognize. Her small figure makes me think she's probably a first year. She is also the one who made cupcakes, according to Sayori. You can just ignore her when she gets moody. Sayori says that quietly into my ear, then turns back towards the other girls. Anyway, this is Natsuki, always full of energy. And this is Yuri, the smartest in the club. Don't say things like that. Yuri, who appears to be comparably more mature and timid, seems to have a hard time keeping up with people like Sayori and Natsuki. Ah, uh, well, it's nice to meet both of you.
And it sounds like you already know Monica, is that right? Why is her name Monica? Everybody else is Japanese. That's right. It's great to see you again, Lauren. Oh, geez, her back. Monica smiles sweetly. We do know each other. Well, we rarely talked, but we were in the same class last year. Monica was probably the most popular girl in class. Smart, beautiful, athletic. Basically completely out of my league. So, having her smile at me so genuinely feels a little... You too, Monica. Uh, I'm Lauren. I'm me. You too, Monica. Come sit down, Lauren. We made room for you at the table so you could sit next to me or Monica. I'll get the cupcakes. Hey, I made them. I'll get them. Sorry, I got a little too excited. Then how about I make some tea as well? The girls have a few desks arranged to form a table. As Sayori mentioned, it's been widened so that there is one space next to Monica and one space next to Sayori. Natsuki and Yuri walk over to the corner of the room, where Natsuki grabs a wrapped tray and Yuri opens a closet. Still feeling awkward, I take a seat next to Sayori. Natsuki proudly marches back to the table, tray in hand. Okay, are you ready? Ta-da! Whoa! Natsuki lifts the foil off the tray to reveal a dozen white, fluffy cupcakes decorated to look like little cats. The whiskers are drawn with icing and little pieces of chocolate were used to make the ears. So cute! I had no idea you were so good at baking, Natsuki. <laughs> well, you know. Just hurry and take one. Sorry grabs one first, then Monica, I follow. Are they made out of... people? It's delicious! Sayori talks with her mouth full and has already managed to get icing on her face. I turn the cupcake around in my fingers, looking for the best angle to take a bite. Natsuki is quiet. I can't help but notice her sneaking glances in my direction. Is she waiting for me to take a bite? I finally bite down. The icing is sweet and full of flavor. I wonder if she made it herself. This is really good. Thank you, Natsuki. Why are you thanking me? It's not like I made these for you or anything, Baka. Haven't I heard this somewhere before? Made them for you or anything? Eh, I thought you technically did. Sayori said, Well, maybe. But not for, you know, you, dummy. All right, all right. I gave up on Natsuki's weird logic and dismissed the conversation. Yuri returns to the table, carrying a tea set. She carefully places a teacup in front of each of us before setting down the teapot next to the cupcake tray. You keep a whole tea set in this classroom? Don't worry, the teachers gave us permission. After all, doesn't a hot cup of tea help you enjoy a good book? Ah, uh, I guess. <laughs> Don't let yourself get intimidated. Yuri's just trying to impress you. Well, I am impressed. Eh, that's not... Insulted, Yuri looks away. I meant that, you know. I believe you. Well, tea and reading might not be a pastime for me, but I at least enjoy tea. I'm glad. Yuri faintly smiles to herself in relief. Monica raises an eyebrow, then smiles at me. So what made you consider the literature club? Uh, well, this girl dragged me here out of guilt. Uh, I was afraid of this question. Something tells me I shouldn't tell Monica that I was practically dragged here by Sayori. Well, I haven't joined any clubs yet, and Sayori seemed really happy here, so... That's okay, don't be embarrassed. We'll make sure you feel right at home, okay? As president of the Literature Club, it's my duty to make the club fun and exciting for everyone. Monica, I'm surprised. How come you decided to start your own club? You could probably be a board member for any of the major clubs. Weren't you a leader of the debate club last year? Uh, well, you know. To be honest, I can't stand all of the politics around the major clubs. It feels like nothing but arguing about the budget and publicity and how to prepare for events. I'd much rather take something I personally enjoy and make something special out of it. And if it encourages others to get into literature, then I'm fulfilling that dream. 
Monica really is a great leader. I feel like this is maybe a satanic cult. Yuri also nods in agreement. Then I'm surprised there aren't more people in the club yet. It must be hard to start a new club. You could put it that way. Not many people are very interested in putting out all the effort to start something brand new. Especially when it's something that doesn't grab your attention, like literature. You have to work hard to convince people that you're both fun and worthwhile. But it makes school events like the festival that much more important. I'm confident that we could all really grow this club before we graduate. Right, everyone? Yeah. We'll do our best. You know it. Everyone enthusiastically agrees. Such different girls, all interested in the same goal. Monica must have worked really hard just to find these three. Maybe that's why they were all so delighted by the idea of a new member joining. Though I still don't really know if I could keep up with their level of enthusiasm about literature. So, Lauren, what kind of things do you like to read? Well, uh... Manga... That's probably what the main character reads, honestly. I personally don't have the time. Considering how little I've read these past few years, I don't really have a good way of answering that. Manga, oh, who called it? I mutter quietly to myself, half-joking. Natsuki's head suddenly perks up. It looks like she wants to say something, but she keeps quiet. Not much of a reader, I guess. Well, that could change. What am I saying? I spoke without thinking after seeing Yuri's sm sad smile. <laughs> anyway, what about you, Yuri? Well, let's see. Yuri traces the rim of her teacup with her finger. My favorites are usually novels that build deep and complex fantasy worlds. The level of creativity and craftsmanship behind them is really amazing to me. And telling a good story in such a foreign world is equally impressive. Yuri goes on, clearly passionate about her reading. She seems so reserved and timid since the moment I walked in, but it's obvious by the way her eyes light up that she finds comfort in the world of books, not people. But you know, I like a lot of things. Stories with deep psychological elements usually immerse me as well. Isn't it amazing how a writer can be so deliberate? Oh. Isn't it amazing how a writer can so deliberately take advantage of your own lack of imagination to completely throw you for a loop? Anyway, I've been reading a lot of horror lately. I read a horror book once. I desperately grasp something I can relate to at the minimal level. At this rate, Yuri might as well be having a conversation with a rock. Really? I wouldn't have expected that, Yuri. For someone as gentle as you... I guess you could say that. But if a story makes me think or takes me to another world, then I really can't put it down. Surreal horror is often very successful at changing the way you look at the world, if only for a brief moment. I've been reading some good surreal horror, actually, uh, that I would definitely recommend. I'll put it in the description. Ugh, I hate horror. Oh, why is that? Well, I just... Natsuki's eyes dart over to me for a split second. Never mind. That's right, you usually like to write about cute things, don't you, Natsuki? What? What gives you that idea? You left a piece of scrap paper behind last club meeting. It looked like you were working on a poem called... Don't say it out loud. And give that back. Fine, fine. <laughs> your cupcakes, your poems. Everything you do is just as cute as you are. Sayori slides up behind Natsuki and puts her hands on her shoulders. Gay. Oh, come on. I'm not cute. Natsuki, you write your own poems? Eh, uh, well, I guess sometimes. Why do you care? I think that's impressive. Why don't you share them sometime? N no Natsuki averts her eyes. You wouldn't like them. Uh, not a very confident writer yet? I understand how Natsuki feels. 
Sharing that level of writing takes more than just confidence. The truest form of writing is writing to oneself. You must be willing to open up to your readers, exposing your vulnerabilities and showing even the deepest reaches of your heart. Do you have any writing experience too, Yuri? Oh, gosh. I can't read. Do you have writing experience too, Yuri? Maybe if you share some of your work, you can set an example and help Natsuki feel comfortable enough to share hers. I guess it's the same for Yuri. Aw, I wanted to read everyone's poems. We all sit in silence for a moment. Okay. I have an idea, everyone. Natsuki and Yuri look quizzically at Monica. Let's all go home and write a poem of your own. Of our own. Then, next time we meet, we'll all share them with each other. That way, everyone is even. Uh, um. Yeah, let's do it. Plus, now that we have a new member, I think it will help us all get a little more comfortable with each other and strengthen the bond of the club. Isn't that right, Lauren? Monica smiles warmly at me once again. Hold on, there's still one problem. Huh? What's that? Now that we're back of the, to the original topic of me joining the club, I bluntly come forth with what's been on my mind the entire time. I never said I would join this club. Sayuri may have convinced me to stop by, but I never made any decision. I still have other clubs to look at, and, uh... I lose my train of thought. All four girls stare back at me with dejected eyes. But... I'm sorry, I thought... Huh. Lauren. You all... I'm defenseless against these girls. How am I supposed to make a clear-headed decision when it's like this? That is, if writing poems is the price I need to pay in order to spend every day with these beautiful girls. Right. Okay, I've decided then. I'll join the literature club. One by one, the girls' eyes light up. Yes, I'm so happy! Sorry, Sayori wraps her arms around me, jumping up and down. Hey, you really did scare me for a moment. If you really just came for the cupcakes, I would be super pissed. Then that makes it official. Welcome to the Literature Club. Uh, thanks, I guess. Okay, everyone. I think with that, we can officially end today's meeting on a good note. Everyone remember tonight's assignment. Write a poem to bring to the next meeting so we all can share. Monica looks over at me once more. Lauren, I look forward to seeing how you express yourself. Eh <laughs> Yeah. Can I really uh, impress the class star Monica with my mediocre writing skills? I already feel the anxiety welling up inside me. Meanwhile, the girls continue to chit-chat as Yuri and Natsuki clean up their food. Hey, Lauren, since we're already here, do you want to walk home together? That's right. Sayori and I never walk home together anymore because she always stayed after school for clubs. Sure, might as well. Yay! With that, the two of us depart the club room and make our way home. The whole way, my mind wanders back and forth between the four girls. Sayori, Natsuki, Yuri, and of course, Monica. Will I really be happy spending every day after school in a literature club with four hot women? I mean, what? Perhaps I'll have the chance to grow closer to one of these girls, but not all of them, because that would be cheating. All right. I'll just need to make the most of my circumstances, and I'm sure good fortune will find me. And I guess that starts with writing a poem tonight. It's time to write a poem. Pick words you think your favorite club member will like. Something good might happen with whoever likes your poem the most. Oh no. Can I save? Just in case. Ah, jeez. Uh, do these make any sense at all? Wow. 
Why isn't the club leader one of these girls on the side? Making the most edgy poem I can think of. Um, is that a hint for who likes it the most? Yeah, I guess it is. Okay. Good, because I wanted to date her anyways. Oh, no. Okay, oh well. She's just a really dark person, isn't she? And I will stop this episode here for now and uh, pick it up next time at the next club meeting. Thank you all for joining me again, and hopefully I'll be back on here more frequently. I know I always say that, but now that I have some free time, it's been uh, something that's been on my mind a little bit more. But yeah, glad to be back. I'll see you next time.